Wallet is our new self custody wallet. Uh, it's out for only two weeks. So if you use it and if you find some rough edges, just tell me. Uh, uh, we will we'll try to fix it. It's available on Android, iOS, and as a Chrome extension as well. What is self custody and why it matters, right? And I think with the recent crypto bust, uh, which happened last year, I think one of the phrases that was going around uh, on Twitter or any social media of your liking was not your keys, uh, not your assets. And that becomes important because uh, like as, as operators of the network, uh, you would want that anybody, uh, anybody on the network can write to your blockchain. Uh, so it's a good exercise to see if you see this grid on the x-axis, there is the operators of the network. If they can be private, permissioned, or public. And similarly, users of the network. Uh, they can be internal, permissioned, and public as well. A good exercise to do is whichever blockchain network you find, or any kind of uh, network that is built upon internet, uh, uh, just to figure out where in, in this nine grids that uh, network lies. So VeChain is this the highlighted one, if you will. Uh, from an operator's net, operators of network point of view, uh, we are permissioned, so you have to do your KYC if you want to become a transaction validator on the network. And we are, from a users of the network point of view, we are public, so basically means anybody in the world can use the network to transact, right? Uh, so yeah, that's self-custody. So this is WeWorld, you can do typical things. I think if all of you are more interested in crypto, so you know what a wallet is. So I don't want to go into details about that, but yeah, you can see your token balances, you can see all of your on-chain history. Uh, you can find all the ERC20 style tokens on the WeChain blockchain as well, which do not like not a lot of uh, self-custody wallets do as well as uh, if you have an NFT, it will automatically should pop up into your NFT browser. So that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, so now to the important bit, more or less today, whatever, like every project that you will be building, you, the high level architecture, if you boil down, it will turn uh, something like this. Most of you will be building a front end dApps, whether it's a web based, whether it's a mobile based application, where you will be talking to the VeChain Thor nodes. Uh, one little bit of trivia is that when you are building from, uh, from from a development point of view, you will need like nodes, blockchain nodes that you can interact with. Just like note down this uh, URL main node at uh, status dot chain dot org. If these are the nodes that we uh, run and manage, so that uh, you as a developer can interact with it, and you don't have to worry about running your own nodes, own uh, local blockchain nodes which my colleague Fabio will tell you if you want to run your own custom VeChain uh, network, how to do that from a development point of view, uh, if you want to think about that. So why is the wallet guy presenting here is basically whenever you, which, whichever application you build, you will need a, a way for the users to actually issue the transactions or prove their identity to your application. And that's where uh, wallets, in technical terms, we call them signers. Basically, you sign all the transactions or you sign your certificate proving your identity uh, to the application that you're trying to use. Uh, this is browser, but if you're building a mobile application, it will be a mobile app as well. Right. So this is, uh, this is the key thing, I think. If you are trying to connect your applications uh, to VeChain wallets, one thing you need to know about is this Connex library, uh, which basically manages the application to wallet interactions. It's a very simple, like we have tried to make it a very simple for you. We are also uh, rewriting this so that it becomes even more simpler. But uh, the only thing you need to worry about is you need to instantiate a class uh, called Connex.Vendor, and then you need to tell it uh, which VeChain network you want to connect to, main network, main net or test net. Uh, you will probably be using test net for development activities. Uh, and then which wallet do you want to use? Uh, we are talking today about VWorld, but VWorld is, is a story in evolution as Sunny talked about, like VeChain has been around for uh, seven, eight years now. So in the beginning we had the wallet series called Sync and Sync2, which was, let's say, the, from a user experience point of view, uh, they were more like developer friendly 
and that's the thing that we have taken that you know in order for crypto to go mainstream you need the user experience of the wallet to be better uh, so yeah so that's the thing this is just gives you a like a way of uh, you don't want your, your users of your dapps to uh, you don't want to force them to use a particular wallet right so uh, more general the better so here you can figure like uh, configure like in a simple switch statement uh, which wallet uh, the user is trying to connect and based on the source basically uh, you can figure out whether it's a sing2 whether it's a weworld extension just a note on weworld extension the way to figure out that uh, the, uh, the user has a weworld extension wallet installed in their uh, browser is basically we inject uh, object called window.vchain so if this returns true that means uh, the user has actually installed the weworld extension and then if you figure that out then you basically need to instantiate a class uh, this is a little bit tricky but you have the code so it's just this is the single line that you need so uh, there is nothing magic behind it for our new like the mobile apps we use something called as wallet connect uh, for integrating things this is this is a little bit more trickier but the good thing is that we are providing you the code so if you head over to github.com vchain foundation slash weworld app you will see how to connect uh, via wallet connect but also all the code snippets that i'm showing you are actually from that repo so uh, head over there if you want to check out the full code in detail just to give you a sense i'm not lying this is just actually like a single line of code so this is like a typical application that you you know first when you come into like crypto land you build is basically like a tipping uh, application which basically says like you know if you want to donate some crypto for the services that somebody is doing just donate them uh, so yeah you can <laughs> this is a simple application so it's like you can define like how many cups of coffee you want to buy the guy and then you just click on the buy button so okay so what does this buy button do uh simple okay you yes, you can see this right yeah so let's as i said let's see so this is the basically the single line that you need to uh, run uh, where you instantiate a new class called tokenstock.render telling which network you want to connect to and which wallet you want to use as i said uh, for if you want to use so let's see if it works live demos are not always kind to you but let's see so sync to should pop up here one cup yeah so the extension says open sync to this is a sync to wallet you can basically see the details if you continue you say it's asking for 100 wet and then if you sign the see so if you just input your whatever password you have it should say thank you so it's it's a very basic application but it just tells you how you are connecting to the sync to wallet now okay. now let's just let's see the demo of v world wallet as well hopefully it works so if you click buy it will say sign and send your transaction and it should go on okay it's too fast now <laughs> but you get an idea so this is how you connect wallet connect is little bit more involved so my one piece of advice when you are building dapps is that probably you should tackle wallet connect at the last because uh, from a hackathon point of view uh, what is more important is your ideas and not actually the let's say the commodity version of how do i connect wallets whichever wallet you are able to connect just go ahead with that uh, so yeah so that's how you connect these are the github repos they are all open source so you can have a look at them and if i were you i'll just copy paste the code to be honest <laughs> so yeah uh, this is the team uh, uh, seven eight people uh, we two repos some of them like i am the only indian guy here but like italians irish people uh, guy from argentina messi fan uh, and irish people as well so yeah this this is the team we have been working for now 9 months as antonio said and in in that time we were able to deliver this and as i said the mobile apps are still like 
new two weeks into the line and as you, you guys as software developer know like in the beginning things uh, sometimes work sometimes don't work but we think it's usable now so please give it a try and then just i want to end uh, yeah, by having a conversation about like what does the future of self custody wallet holds and before we uh, go into like future of self custody uh, why is this important like you know every technology it evolves over time and most like there are many forcing functions of the technology to evolve but one of them is competition is, uh, and essentially trying to give the better experience to users but if you will see so this is a very nice framework uh, this is a british guy called simon wardley and he talks about wardley maps as a way of figuring out your strategy about how you go about building things uh, for your business for your apps etc etc right in the beginning like when the technology is very new uh, you call that uh, if you see the x axis is the evolution so in the beginning everything is a genesis state genesis state is means that you know there are probably like five people in the world who can figure out how to build that application now as things evolve new companies pop up it becomes easier to build applications on different platforms that you're building on and then you get into this stage of product slash custom build and product slash custom build means that probably in the ecosystem you'll find uh, multiple uh, similar things that do the same job and then there is this competition forcing factor that forces you to evolve according to the market as well so uh, the reason i'm mentioning in this is because you as you come up with your ideas as well have a think about how that will evolve over a two years five years it's a good uh, ideation thing to do and the good thing is that the and i think he has written like 10 12 uh, blog posts and they are freely available on medium and i think if you sit with a coffee you can finish end to end in like two couple of hours and it's actually a good investment yeah. uh, this comes from a guy who was an engineer who became a cto and then he could not figure out uh, what should be the strategy of his company be for the next 5 10 20 years right um, most of the times uh, strategy is a very like nebulous term but we as, in, as so what he has done is basically trying to come up with a framework that makes sense and helps you evaluate different competing uh, market uh, forcing functions so if you take that view uh, i think self custody wallets are in this product stage if you will so as you will know like vchain has multiple wallets pretty much every crypto uh, every blockchain network has their own wallets and what you will see is uh, more or uh, more and less like all these uh, wallets will start to work on all the blockchains and not just their own native blockchains so that's that's one thing that's already there like if you use metamask you can probably use uh, it over all the l2s and different networks as well but the point is you should be able to use metamask we world whatever you are using uh, and you as a user should not have to worry about which blockchain is the underlying infrastructure where you are interacting with now what does a commodity stage of self custody wallets look like i think the two main factors that are that are going to uh, work towards that is account abstraction uh, this is more from a user friendliness point of view where you don't have to uh, learn about mnemonic phrases and all that kind of stuff uh, like we as engineers don't realize uh, how difficult it is to understand the whole like, the key crypto derivation and mnemonic phrases and public key and private key uh, so it's good thumb uh, rule of thumb is talk to your parents if they can figure out then probably it's it's usable and then uh, wallet chat and slash notification in a decentralized manner right so all everything we build i think and I, i don't know about you guys but like from my point of view the reason i came into crypto land was uh decentralization right everybody should be able to use the application and there should be no one who can deny you the access to the network similarly uh, but one thing that is lacking in the industry today is how do you reach out to your customers like in, in if you if in a crypto world everybody is anonymous and if something goes wrong or if you want to provide some additional services how how do you chat with them that's where uh, this wallet chat uh, slash notifications well notification is just one way of uh the bidirectional thing that is wallet chat 
So these are the like near term things that will happen in uh, self custody wallet land. So probably like by the next year you will start to hear these terms more and more and probably you will you are hearing now as well. If you take more like five to 10 year down the line approach uh, and then at this stage it becomes like a prediction, right? So don't, don't hold me to it. But I think what's gonna happen is that every main like platform is gonna come with a self custody wallet baked into it. And for example, if you use Brave as a browser, it has a self custody wallet built into it. So um, every piece of solid, uh, every piece of like uh, product, so whether it's your fridge, whether it's your car, it's gonna have a, a self custody wallet and then they can do whatever they want to do depending upon the use case that you're trying to build. So yeah, so that's the future, at least from our point of view. Uh, and then next, I'm just gonna hand it to, uh, over to my colleague Fabio, who is probably gonna talk to you about things around smart contract development, how do you build on VeChain, uh, because I think you guys will need to write some smart contracts or uh, you can use Vorge, which Roshin will talk about. So thank you, thank you for your time and Fabio will take over.